Bellwood was a beautiful village lined with cottages and trees. The tranquility of the village always attracts people to it. Not only people but also evil spirits seem to be attracted to this place. Sudden and unexplainable things began to happen in the village which attracted the attention of a very ambitious journalist named Sophie. Reports are coming from this village about the disappearances of people without any notice. This was not enough when strange rumors started to get hold that shadows have come to life to take revenge on people who betrayed it. This evil spirit haunts the nights and snatches its victims from their homes. The most recent disappearance is of a ten-year boy. Sophie has an eye for exciting and challenging cases and she liked the intriguing gossip about this problem. She was eager to uncover the truth of this mystery, so she packed her bags and started her journey towards her unimagined destiny. When she arrived there, it was getting dark. The fog was descending lightly. The flickering street lamps, their dim lights casting long, wavering shadows, do little to ward off the pervasive darkness that seems to seep from every crack and crevice. The wind whistles hauntingly through narrow alleyways, its mournful howls carrying whispers of forgotten secrets and untold tales. The silence is broken intermittently by the creaking of rusted signboards swinging uneasily in the wind, each one a faded remnant of an era long gone. She met wary glances and hushed conversations of the people. They were fearful and intrigued at the same time. They hoped that she would be able to delve into the dark secret of this mystery that has held the village and their loved ones captive. Sophie spent the night at the hotel where she has reserved the room for her. The next morning she started her investigation. She visited the places of the victims where they disappeared. Sophie was unable to find any definite clue that could help her with the investigation. Sophie, the determined investigator, delves deep into her relentless pursuit of the truth behind the mysterious disappearances. However, her path becomes increasingly treacherous as enigmatic whispering shadows begin to haunt her every step. Dancing mockingly at the edges of her senses, these elusive figures seem to exist only to torment her, taunting her with their ethereal presence. Each time she dares to approach them, they vanish into thin air, leaving no trace of their existence. Sophie's frustration grows with every futile attempt to grasp them, leaving her feeling powerless against these intangible adversaries. As she tirelessly searches for clues, the absence of any solid evidence only amplifies her growing exasperation. The taunting whispers echo through her mind, sowing seeds of doubt and confusion. Sophie's once unwavering determination is tested, her frustration threatening to drown her in a sea of uncertainty. Amidst this unnerving atmosphere, Sophie finds herself encompassed by an eerie silence, yet the shadow's whispers persist, echoing off the walls of her consciousness. Desperate to solve the mystery, she battles her mounting frustration, pushing forward in her investigation despite the shadow's constant elusiveness. When everything seemed dark and closed, she was exposed to a new ray of light. Sophie continues to explore acutely aware that the true mysteries of the town lie not only in its empty streets and decaying buildings but in the whispers that follow like phantoms behind each step. The village holds an enigmatic secret, waiting feverishly for its arrival to unravel the veil of darkness that has consumed it. She reached the library. It was long forgotten and breathing its last. The only light came from the moon, which cast long, eerie shadows across the library's interior. The air was thick with dust and cobwebs, and the only sound was the creaking of the floorboards as the wind blew through the broken windows. As Sophie paces the library, she notices the old woman sitting behind the desk. At first glance, it was hard to notice her, but Sophie approached her and addressed her. Excuse me, ma'am? Are you in charge of this library? Sophie asked excitedly. At Sophie's voice, she raised her head. The woman was in her late seventies with sharp eyes and a strong face. The deep lines on her face show the dark and grave past. Her hands were unsteady as she tried to sit up on her chair. It creaked under her. The librarian took her time to consider Sophie and nodded. So that means you are Miss Petunia. Can you please tell me anything about these disappearances in the village? Do you have any knowledge about it? Sophie was in excitement upon seeing this woman. She was amazed at her excited voice. It was as if she always knew that she will find a clue to this mystery in this library. Petunia sizes her up and said you will die in this quest. Many before you have tried to solve it and they all lost to the same power. Better you go home if you want to stay alive. Petunia was looking at Sophie. I am different from others. 
I will uncover this mystery whatever it takes Sophie was determined and by sensing this determination of Sophie, Petunia told her to sit down and started the tale of the ancient curse that haunts the village to date. Sophie took a seat and sat close to Petunia, eager to hear her story. Petunia's voice trembled as she spoke long ago, this village was home to a powerful sorcerer named Malachi. He was obsessed with immortality and sought to achieve it through dark means. Gathering forbidden knowledge, he stumbled upon a dreadful curse, crafted by an ancient order. Sophie leans forward, her curiosity piqued. What kind of curse? And how does it relate to the disappearances? Petunia's voice was now a whisper. The curse, my dear, was known as Whisper of Death. It is said that anyone who disturbs the ancient relics hidden beneath this village invokes the wrath of Whispera, an ancient goddess of shadows. Those affected are drawn into an ethereal realm, trapped between our world and the next. Sophie's eyes widen with realization. So, the disappearances, they are a result of this curse? Are people being sucked into this other realm? How can we break it? Now Sophie was intrigued. To break the curse, one must find the lost mark of Whispera. It is a symbol of balance, forged by the goddess herself. The mark has the power to unbind those trapped between realms and restore harmony to our village, said Petunia solemnly. Sophie stands, energized, ready to face the daunting task ahead. Thank you, ma'am. With this knowledge, I may finally put an end to the disappearances and bring peace to this village, said Sophie determinately. When Sophie opened her mouth to ask about Petunia herself, she found that the chair is empty. No one was there except Sophie and her dark secrets. The library was filled with old books, their spines faded and their pages yellowed with age. Some of the books were open, their pages covered in strange symbols and writing. Others were stacked in piles, some reaching almost to the ceiling. In the center of the library was a large table, on which sat a single book. The book was covered in black leather, and its pages were made of thick, parchment-like paper. The book was open, and its pages were filled with words written in a language that no one could understand. The book seemed to be the only thing in the library that was not covered in dust or cobwebs. It seemed to glow with a faint light, and it gave off a strange, sinister energy. As the wind blew through the library, the pages of the book turned slowly, as if being read by an invisible hand. The words on the pages seemed to writhe and dance, and the air around the book seemed to become colder and more oppressive. She was looking at it when words show out of the page. You are worthy of this book. You are the chosen one for this work. Sophie was astounded to find these words and her heart pumped with fear and excitement. She skipped and scanned the book and found everything she needs to know. How strange it was to understand the language Sophie never knew before, the symbols she had not seen before. But everything becomes smooth for those who are chosen for the special destiny. The library was a place of forgotten secrets, and it was a place where evil could lurk. Anyone who dared to enter the library would be in danger, for the secrets that it held could be deadly. Sophie leaves the library, her mind racing with thoughts of the ancient curse. Armed with the newfound information, she sets off on her mission to search for the lost mark of Whispera and break the curse that has plagued the village and caused countless disappearances. As she knows what she has to be done she started her journey towards her chosen destiny. As she ventured deeper into the dense, untamed wilderness, a sense of unease began to weigh heavily upon her. The haunted whisper of nature surrounded her, while ancient trees stood tall, their gnarled branches reaching out like skeletal hands. The air was thick with an otherworldly mystique that seemed to shimmer under the light of the pale moon above. Suddenly, Sophie stumbled upon an overgrown trail, the remnants of an ancient pathway leading her forward. The path, once trodden by those long forgotten, now exhibited a faint presence of something ethereal. Curiosity fueled her determination as she cautiously followed the trail, stepping over tangled roots and navigating the treacherous path. As she journeyed, the sounds of nature faded, replaced by a haunting stillness that seemed to wrap itself around him. Finally, the character arrived at the threshold of the ancient burial ground, a place frozen in time, untouched by mortal hands for countless centuries. Moss-covered tombstones punctuated the landscape, while eerie mist hung low in the air, obscuring the view beyond. A chill ran down her spine as his eyes scanned the eerie graveyard, her gaze ultimately finding an ancient mausoleum adorned with ivy, standing as the centerpiece of the burial ground. 
Drawn forward by an unseen force, Sophie took hesitant steps toward the mausoleum, its stone structure coated in an age-old patina that bore witness to the passage of time. Cautiously, she pushed open the creaking wooden doors, creating a grating sound that resonated through the air. A sliver of light cut through the darkness, illuminating a sacred chamber within. Stepping inside, Sophie's breath caught as her eyes fell upon the object of her quest, the strange symbol, etched intricately into an ancient stone pedestal at the heart of the chamber. Spellbound, she approached the symbol, its lines, and curves resonating with a potent energy that beckoned her closer. Streaks of moonlight filtered in from a small, cracked window, casting a mystical glow upon the symbol's surface. The symbol of the goddess of shadows is an intricate design that evokes a sense of mystery and darkness. It consists of a circular shape, symbolizing unity and continuity, with a jagged, twisting border. In the center of the circle, there is an elegant and stylized depiction of a shadowy figure, seemingly ethereal and almost shifting. The figure is shaped like a feminine silhouette, with long, flowing hair cascading down her back and reaching her feet. The hair blends seamlessly with the shadows that surround her, emphasizing her connection to darkness. Sophie's heart raced with anticipation as she extended a trembling hand, hesitant yet determined to touch the symbol and unlock the mysteries held within. As she touched the symbol, everything went dark and a streak of light shows on the pedestal which was wavering with the absent air. A voice grave and smooth struck hard with the ears of Sophie in this hushed silence. Who are you? What do you want from me? I am Sophie and I came here to break the curse that lies on this village. The villagers are disappearing and turning into shadows. I came here to help from you, said Sophie with a plea in her voice. Who has guided you here? Sophie took a deep breath and told the light all about Petunia and the book in the library. The curse is not easy to break, came the voice. The villagers have taken earthly advantages and given their souls in return. They will have to repent for their wrongdoings. No one is allowed to touch the ancient relics. They crossed their limits. I promise the villagers will repent for what they did, said Sophie earnestly. Then I will return them to this world, but only on one condition the voice was now slow. What is it? We will do anything to save those people. Sophie was determined. The voice said one of the ancient artifacts is stolen from its place. You have to go and search for it and then return it to its original place, and then the curse will be broken. Sophie was relieved and trapped at the same time. She had no idea of the stolen artifact and who had stolen it. Now it was up to Sophie to find the ancient relic and to return it to its original place. Little did she know then, that this journey, she is going to take will change her life, and who knows the whispering shadows are now willing to help Sophie to protect them.